Hello everyone, if you remember we have talked about how to create a 3D log for papers or objects previously. So if you haven't watched that already, I recommend you after finishing this video watch that too. However, what I'm gonna do today is create this long scroll so that we can easily modify its contents and replace it with any other content. But before we dive in, if you're new to motion graphics and after effects and you're unsure about the path to becoming a pro motion designer, I highly recommend checking out my Motion Hero course. And if you like more of these techniques, don't forget to subscribe and be sure to like so that YouTube can offer you similar videos. Okay, without further ado, let's start. The first thing that I need to do is create a wide comp. For that, I click on create a new composition and set its width to 5000 and its height to 1000 and create a new comp. I name it the scroll. I head over to the start comp and place the scroll comp below the character animation comp. I solo the layer. I enable the shy option so the other layers would be hidden and so I can only focus on this scroll comp. I head over to the scroll comp and again here I have to create a new comp as well so I can put the contents of the scroll in it. Alright so I create a new comp but now I want it to be vertical so I set its width to 1000 and its height to 5000 and I name it contents. After that to create the content of this comp I head over to the final comp And I want to copy the text and images that I used before. And then I head back to the contents comp and paste them. I also create a solid as the background. And white it. I open the scroll comp and import the contents comp right here. And set its rotation to minus 90. I head back to the start comp and now I have to cut the scroll comp to 30 equal pieces horizontally. To do this with this I use the RDS slicer scrape which is totally free and you can download it using the link in the description below. So I set this to 30 and this to 1 and I hit a slice and as you can see this comp is now sliced into 30 equal pieces. I select all the layers, make them 3D, I don't want this layer anymore so I delete it. Well after that the anchor point of each layer has to be placed to the left side of each one. To do that I use the motion tools script and click on this option so the anchor point of each layer would be placed on the left side. Then I parent the 31st layer to the previous one which is the 30th one and 29 to 28 and I continue like this and parent each layer to its previous one. After that I parent the Y rotation of the layer 31 to the Y rotation of layer 30. But before I select all the layers and search Y rotation. Well, now I parent the Y rotation of the last layer to the Y rotation of the previous one. So when this layer gets rotated, the next layer rotates and moves as well. Well, I have to keep doing this and parent each Y rotation to the Y rotation of the previous one. But as you know this is pretty time consuming. To do this easily I just have to go to the expression box of this layer and replace the name of the layer with the phrase index. And because I want it to be parented to the previous layer I add minus 1 which means the Y rotation of this layer will be parented to the Y rotation of the previous layer which is 30. So 31 will be connected to the 30. 30 to 29. And the list goes on every layer parented to the previous one. Now if I change this rotation as you can see the same thing happens. 
y rotation of layer 31 is parented to the y rotation of layer 30. Aside from the y rotations being parented, we also want the y rotation of each layer to be manually modified. But now as you can see, if I change the y rotation of this layer, nothing happens. To do that, I type a plus sign at the end of the expression and type value which means the current property. And this all basically means, aside from the y rotation of this layer being parented to the y rotation of the previous layer, every change to this value will affect the layer. After that, I right click on the y rotation of this layer and hit copy expression only and paste it for the other layers as well. Now, if you take a look at it, once I change this layer, the other layers move as well and a curving effect will be made for the layers. I keep doing this and pasting the expression for each Y rotation property. Except for the first layer which doesn't need this expression. It doesn't need to be parented to any layer. Now if I change the Y rotation of the first layer, as you can see all the layers curve together. And aside from that, I can rotate each layer individually as well. After that, I unsolo the layers. I select the scale of the first layer and set it to 45 so they all shrink. And then I adjust its position and match it with the laptop. I match the angle of the scroll to the angle of the laptop and then I rotate it. Let me rotate this a little bit more. And to select the layers better, I like the comp of the character. And then I rotate this. Once I adjusted the scroll to thin down this part and widen the end one, I head back to the scroll comp and select the contents comp and by hitting Control shift c I put it in a new comp. Then I apply the power pin effect to it. I lower the top left down, I set it to 300. And I set the bottom lift to minus 300, so I get something like this. I head back to the main comp. Let's see how it turned out. It's too thin, let me increase it a bit. I set it to 250. And set this to 750. Well, it's good. Oh, seems like the text is upside down. Gotta fix it. I head to the contents comp and parent the two images to the text layer and flip the text layer vertically. Let's check it out. The text seems fine. To fill out this empty space, I open the contents comp and move the text down a bit. And to fill out this empty section, Isolate this part, copy it, and paste it over here. After that, to animate the scroll contents, I come here and place a ruler here.
and add a null to the scene. I parent the text layer to it. I open its position and create a keyframe for it. I move 7 frames forward and move the text down just so the next line is exactly between these two rulers. It's good. Again, I move 7 frames forward and I copy and paste this keyframe and make them easy ease. And for this animation to continue and not stop, I alt click on the stopwatch of the position and go to the expressions, property, then select loop out and I change the cycle to offset so the animation continues. I head back to the main comp. Let's see how the animation looks. Great. To make the appearing animation of the scroll like this, I head to the taper comp. Right here, first I select the contents comp and double click on the rectangle tool so a mask as the size of the comp would be created. I open it and create a keyframe for the mask path and put it here. In the beginning, I make the mask look like this and I move it to the left so it appears like this and I make the final keyframe easy ease. Then I create a solid and name it noise and apply the fractal noise effect to it. I head over to transform, uncheck this box, and increase the width, and decrease its height, and crank up the contrast and set it to 700. I scale it up so the noise would look stretched. I create a keyframe for offset turbulence and here I move it forward. Then I create another keyframe for its evolution and here I set it to 3. Once that's done, I duplicate this layer. Let me hide this lower layer. I create a keyframe for it in the beginning. I choose the noise layer as the mat so it would look like this. I increase its feather. In the beginning, the mask is here. And here it should be here. I also increase the feather of this mask. I hit U. In the beginning, it should be like this. And in the end, it should be like this, so the edges wouldn't look fade. I come here and increase the feather a bit. Here, the mask should move over here. And in the end, it should move right here. I think the evolution could be even more, so the noise would have more motion. I also increase its feather even more. Let's see how the animation is now. Looks good to me. To fix the other side of the scroll too, I select the layers that are for the behind part, and I duplicate them. 
I move them to the top and change their label to so they would be obvious. I select the first layer and add a gradient trap effect to it. Then I select the effect and under the edit menu, I select the copy with relative property links and then I select the other layers and hit Ctrl V so when I change the effect of the first layer, the effect of the other layers changes as well. Well, I put the black part down and the white part up. Though I think I need to delete the last layer. I change their colors. I think it would be better if I switch the colors. And in order not to be visible here, I decrease the X scale of this layer so there wouldn't be any problem here. And in order not to have these lines here, I select all the behind layers. And I hit M button twice so the properties of the mask would be visible. I select mask expansion and set it to 1 so the mask would expand and those lines would disappear. After that, I parent this layer to this one so later on when I made any changes to this layer, the other layers would move along. Alright, to match the moment the scroll appears with the animation of the character, I had to when the character obviously hits a button which is exactly right here, I select all the layers and set their initial points here. Let's see how it turned out. I can also speed down the appearing animation a bit. I think it's pretty good. Good luck and thanks for watching.